There are many powerful antennae here, which are extremely important for our cognitive optimization experiments. Many antennas, you say? Oh, that's right. We have this one, this one, and that one too. Hello, stalkers, and welcome to the anomalous dugout. In this video, we will talk about the various radars that can be found in the zone and in the stalker universe, and try to answer an important question. Is the Lemensk antenna the same as the Duga radar? The first radar that the players will encounter is the device known under the name of Brain Scorcher. It is a fictional military installation inside the Red Forest, composed of five emitters, one of which is broken, which purpose is to, in the words of the sea consciousness itself, take control over the consciousness of those who get too close. In practice, this means transforming people into zombies, or arguably worse, into monolith fanatics. The device is designated in secret documents as a rainbow emitter or a Kamenov emitter, and it was designed in Laboratory X-8. Then some of its components were built in Laboratory X-18 and sent to X-16 before ending up in their final place, Laboratory X-19 under the Red Forest. Most probably the whole thing was built between 1989 and the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, and then activated by the Sea Consciousness after the appearance of the Zone in 2006. One interesting fact is that the Sea Consciousness mentions the existence of several other devices that compose their defense system. We created a network of psi fields on the way to the Zone Center in order to recruit agents. You know one of these fields by the name of Brain Scorcher. When a stalker attempts to reach the zone center in order to fulfill some wish, we acquire control over his consciousness and program him to a specific mission. So it is possible that other antennas such as this one, or at least machines working on the same principle, can be found in the zone. The Brain in Laboratory X-16 is a great example of another Psy device. The exciting thing is that we might see even more of those in the upcoming Stalker 2. The second radar in the games is located in Lemansk, a fictional and legendary city that was built around the mysterious Radio Wave Institute. Not much is known about this place, but unlike the previous antenna, this one was built before the first Chernobyl disaster in 1986. Here's what Forrester has to say about Limansk. For a long time no one heard anything about that town. Many folks don't believe Limansk ever existed. Only they're lying. The town exists. I saw it with my own eyes before the first disaster. You see, there was a closed institute there, a real research institute, with some fancy name, something like Radio Wave. They put up a huge antenna too, the size of a five-story building. Real intellectuals, those fellas. Only there was never any peace in Lemansk. Its residents were always cagey, suspicious of strangers always muttering something under their noses and praising the Soviet regime even when we had provision shortages. We country folks used to go round Limansk. The people weren't exactly healthy and the town kinda made your head hurt. Must have been the antenna. Then Chernobyl happened, but Limansk was not even evacuated. They might have screwed something up in the documents, or maybe it was all that secrecy, I don't really know. But that was the last I heard of Lemansk. I've got no business there. So it appears that this radar had some effects on the inhabitants of the city. Effects that could be seen as some sort of mind control. 
These effects cannot be witnessed when approaching the antenna in the game, but it might have been deactivated long ago. In any case, the theme of mind control emissions is still there, so it's possible that this device is an ancestor of the most recent rainbow emitter we talked about previously. Both of these radars have been heavily inspired by the real-life Duga radar, which is located inside the real 30km exclusion zone, some kilometers south of the power plant. This antenna is a Soviet over-the-horizon radar that was part of the missile defense network of the USSR. Other arrays, such as this one, were built in other places, but this one in particular operated from 1976 to 1989, and is especially impressive by its size. 700 meters, or 2,297 feet long, and 150 meters, or 492 feet high. Of course, the radars in Stoker are not that huge, but they clearly remind of the very well-known Duga radar. Moreover, before the true purpose of the area was discovered, there were wild speculations and theories about the Duga, with one popular story depicting it as a Soviet mine control experiment. And finally, the design of the Limansk antenna is a direct copy of the real design of the Duga radar. So much so that many people actually believe that the Limansk antenna is the Duga radar in the game. I've always thought this was not the case, but after reading some comments about it, I decided to do some more research. Yes, both antennas have the same design, but their size is very different. The real Duga radar is simply gigantic, whereas the Lemans Carre is just a downsized version of it. Not only is it shorter, but it's way less long, as it is only composed of three main towers and two thinner towers, when the real-life radar has more than 20 of these main towers. Then, historically, it is possible that the two radars were built around the same period, since Duga started emitting in 1976, and Limansk was built before 1986, apparently in the 60s. Yet, the rest of the story ends here, as the emissions from the Duga radar could be listened to with a simple radio, and were identified as missile defense radio waves, while the goal of Lehmann's commissions was apparently never discovered. The fact that the antenna was part of a radio wave institute seems to indicate that it was also radio waves, but that name could have just been a cover-up for a more secret project. Furthermore, the locations really don't match. In one hand we have the real-life Duga radar, inside a forest and quite far from the power plant. And in the other hand we have the Lehmansk radar, which is in a city next to the Red Forest, very close to the CNPP. So with all these elements and despite their similarities, I believe that the Duga radar and the Lehmansk antenna are two different things. And if you're still not convinced, here is a last bit of fresh news. The Duga radar can be seen in the trailer of Stoker 2, and here it looks exactly like its real-life counterpart. The shape, size and setting are perfect. This most probably means that this version of the Duga radar will appear in Stoker 2, which basically confirms that it is a different location as Lemansk unless they completely rework or scrapped some locations, but I hardly believe that. Anyway, we'll know for sure when the game comes out. And that's basically it. I hope I could bring some clarity on these radar questions to you fellow stalkers. Be sure to tell me what you think about it in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.